I've made a mould so you can make a realistic looking octopus. Whether it's one that's trying to get out of its container like this one. Or it's a cooked one in preparation. Here's the little fella with his legs hanging down the side. Or rather crawling down the side. Here's one in preparation on a board. And here's my mould. It's just for the legs, but I'll show you how to make the really simple head part as well. <clears throat> I'm using Cernit Doll uh, Biscuit Colour. You can also use the porcelain colour in Cernit. I use Cernit because it has quite a waxy feel and doesn't stick too hard into the mould. A sticky clay won't come out of the mould with as much definition. So there's the two Cernit doll colours. You can just see a slight difference between them. I think Kato would work quite well and, and probably Duke it. But each needs to be warm enough to press into the mould, but also cool enough to take back out. In some cases this might mean leaving the clay in the mould to cool for a little bit before taking it out. But first of course it needs to be soft enough to put into the mould. Form the material into a tube with a point. This is the leg shape and you can feed the tip of the leg into the tip of one of the leg shapes in the mould and then break it off as it gets to the centre. You carry on doing this with each leg, forming a little tip, making sure it's soft enough, pulling the, sorry that was just a little bit broken, it wasn't quite soft enough, I'll rub it, I'll roll it again. If it's not soft enough, it does break a little bit. So form it into that tube again with the point. And put it into the, the leg, breaking it off again. Each leg is formed in the same way until you come to the last one. The last one's a bit different if you do the head, if you're putting a head on, but I'll show you that later. Number three. Push the legs in. And carry on all the way around until you get a piece in every leg. Keep softening the material so it doesn't break down on you. 
sometimes this type of clay can form cracks if it's not softened enough. Because it does have a bit of a waxy feel, it sometimes just breaks. Right, I've left the last one because this is how I make this is how I make the head. But first of all, I need to trim off the excess clay from all the others. So very carefully run your blade over the surface of the mold. Normally I have my thumb guide over the top of the blade to guide it, but so you can see. I've left it open. If a few of your legs get cut off a bit short, you might need to add them back in again. And stick them down really well. Otherwise, otherwise they can come off again. Right, so now we're ready to make the head part. Soften the clay just as you have done with each other leg and break, break off a piece and form a blob on the end, rather like an elongated teardrop. That part's going to be the head. Feed the leg in again and then leave the head on the end. Although I think this one might be a little bit big. So I'll take it off and make it a bit smaller. Stick it back in and press it to the rest of the clay firmly just reshape the head and once again you need to trim off the excess but don't trim the head off so just the excess up to where the head comes and then you'll just have to smooth the join where you've cut it So this little octopus can sit just for a moment while I make his breathing hole. To make this it's a little bit like a trumpet so I make a tiny cone and stick my cocktail stick in it to make the hole. Roll it round the cocktail stick. I'm not perfectly happy with that, so I'll try again. You can wrap it round the cocktail stick as well. It just needs to be like a little cone. And then that short little cone sits onto one side of the head. So I use the cocktail stick to push it on as well. Then I need two little eyes, tiny, tiny little eyes. I just roll two little balls and put one on either side of the head. And then I make a little hole in each side, in each eye, the 
but I'll, I'll put some beads in later. Just make sure they stick down really well. Because when you start powdering it, those little eyes and blowhole can come off. Right, the next trick is to get the powder colours you need. Now, octopuses are many different colours, and uh, especially when they're live, they can even change colour from one side to the next. They're quite good at camouflage. So I'm choosing some brownie, brownie reddish colours for this one. Although a cooked one is often more pinky or even purple. As you can see. Um, the, the legs are curved underneath. Right, these are called carrés. These ones are Conti, Conti crayons. And um, I'm just scraping a little bit off each one. These are my favourite colours, for both for um, choice of colours and for softness and quality. So I'm scraping a little bit of each of my choice of colours into these little containers. Which will give me a palette to work from. Just use the side of your blade and scratch a little bit off. And the powder is really nice and fine. So I'd choose a purp more pu the more purpley colours for um, part some of the octopus. There's a nice reddish one. And there's quite a pinky one. And of course you have the greys and greens that they sometimes... They sometimes display those colours. Depends on the on the background because they they try and camouflage themselves. Okay, so I paint these powder colours onto the polymer clay while it's still in the mould. The reason for that is that I want to keep the definition of the little suckers on their legs. And I paint the, dust this on quite roughly um, and press it reasonably firmly while trying not to damage the blowhole, but I often do. It seems to want to try and get up, come unstuck. I have to be a bit gentle around there. And then down the legs as well. I'll often choose a different colour for the legs than I have for the head, often a darker colour, especially for the tips of the legs. Because as the leg gets narrower, it often gets darker. Put plenty of powder on. to all eight and um, I've decided I want some more greenness to this one and a bit of grey often the colour on the back of the legs is slightly different from the colour on the front and um, it's often quite a lot duller. So 
So I don't try to make him too evenly coloured all the way around because he may be a slightly different colour on one side than the other. It's worth taking a bit of time doing this to give them enough colour. Once this is done, blow the excess powder colour off. Then you need to start removing the little legs from the mould. Do this really carefully. First of all, just flex the mould really slightly to help the legs come away a little bit. And you can use a cocktail stick to start to lift the ends of the legs. Just the very tips first off. Work your way round. Whoops, I've just broken that leg. It shouldn't matter too much. Gently lift all the way around. These little curled up legs. They're curled up because otherwise the mould would have had to be enormous. Each one, loosen each one. Then you can gently flip you can bend the mould and gently flip him out. Once he's out, hold very, very delicately because otherwise you can squash the definition. Just tidying up that edge. This little leg I could try and attach back on but actually it's better just to hide the, the broken leg. So, it's time to dust the underneath, holding the head really, really carefully. Start applying dust between the powder between the legs on the piece of connecting skin between each leg. That's the darkest part, so it's worth doing this first. all the way around. And then I start to dust the little suckers and I do it really gently brushing along the sides of them and hoping that the edges of each sucker will pick up just a little bit of colour because if you manage to keep the dust to the edges of the suckers, it makes the definition more obvious and it's very realistic. So it's really worth taking your time with this. I'm brushing over it, but I'm hoping that the colour will just stick to the edges rather than colour the whole thing. And I'm much more light with this bit than I was with the backs of the legs and always holding that head really really gently. The ends of the legs need to be a bit darker. The little tips of the tips of their legs And I leave the centre bit quite light because that's the way it is in, in real life. But add much more colour to the sides of the legs. It is worth taking your time about this and you'll get a much better result. I 
actually I sometimes add even a little bit of extra colour after it's baked with a crayon just to make just to make the definition on those suckers a little bit stronger. Right. Now I just need to put his little they call it the beak. It's the mouth part. And I use a little black bead for that because that's what it looks like. Add a little bit of liquid polymer to the center. And then I need some accent beads. Oh, there's a few. <laughs> they roll all over the place. If I use a little liquid Fimo, I can pick up the accent beads from the surface and just pop it into the centre. Push it down reasonably well. And then turn him over and do the same for the eyes. Just add an accent bead to each side to make the little eyeballs. This gives them quite a character. And at this stage you can roll his legs up and disappear the ones that are a bit short and make the ones that are nice and long more obvious by curling them round. And this is where you add the character to your little to the little fella. And of course, if you're putting him in a bucket, you can make some of his little arms try and climb out. When you've got his form, you can just finish him off with a bit more powder to the white bits of his legs that are, are showing up. That just finishes him off, finishes the little ends of the legs off, nice and dark. <laughs> 